everybody long time no see welcome back to the channel real quick wanted to update y'all know it's been a really long time since i've uploaded a video i've had a pretty relaxing december after a major wrist surgery so i'm looking forward to sharing some exciting news coming up and a lot of other updates and things that i want to do with this channel with you guys in the next video or two after this one that we're here to talk about today and that is the rigging video of my 2024 tournament kayak and I'm really excited about this one. You guys already know I'm down here at my favorite shop. These guys are like family to me. They're the dugout bait and tackle down in Marietta, Georgia. The best rigging business in the entire country for your kayak and everything else. So let's walk through this kayak. I've got a couple of very big changes and then a couple of things that I've done before that we just kind of updated that I'll run you guys through here. So first and foremost, you guys, let's start with the kayak. This is new from Hobie. I will be doing an entirely separate video on the main differences and, and some big updates with Hobie as well. I've had a lot of questions that I've wanted to address regarding you know, quality control, some issues with the 360, concerns. I'm gonna cover all of that with y'all here in another video. But first, let's talk about the XR. So this is new for 2024. The main thing here, we have reinforced drive well where there was some issues with the nut there. There's now two. We have reinforced drive well. You can lock this drive out. So if something happens, you're able to lock out the 360 drive and essentially use it as a 180, which could really come in handy. Also new for Hobie moving forward in 2024, they're gonna have reinforced seat posts. So these metal plates under the seat to give you a little extra stability there. Let's go over just some of the aesthetics of the kayak. This year, I did go back to blue. I ran a blue kayak a couple times last year and I wanted to just kind of change it up this year. Next, I went with a teak wood grain marine mat with, with a light blue underlay. I think it's really sharp and I really like the wood grain teak. Marine mat is really nice, you guys. I started running these about two years ago now, not only for the aesthetics, but for me, more importantly, I fish barefoot a lot of the time. So this stuff is really comfortable. It stays cool, so you're not standing on hot plastic. And if you're a real stealthy fisherman, if you drop something on this hard plastic, it can make a really loud noise the marine mat kind of dampens everything so if you're fishing really really shallow if you're bed fishing i like to have that extra cushion there a lot of benefits with the marine mat as opposed to just having a the plastic hole as your flooring system also wanted to mention as with all of my videos and i need to do a better job at my tournament videos with this and i will be doing that next year but every single thing i talk about y'all all everything will be linked in the bio of this video along with the dugout bait and tackles information call them you'll probably get ansley or jamie or craig you can ask them any question you want about rigging and they'll be glad to help you all out okay so the first major change we are switching up our units on this kayak this time so if you all have watched my previous videos i've been running garmin for several years and you guys i really love my units but a couple things made me want to kind of switch over and give the lorance units a shot i've been watching a lot of josh jones's videos been talking to him a little bit about their electronics and you guys may not know this but if you if those of you that have followed my channel for its entirety my first four years kayak fishing I ran Lowrance units. I had the HDS 9s a long time ago. I love their mapping. I love their 2D. I love the side scan. The interface was super easy. Probably one of my favorite units. Then I made a couple switches, ended up with Garmin in the last few years. No complaints there, but I was just kind of ready to try something different and go back to Lowrance that I'm very familiar with. And just thought it was time to kind of switch it up a little bit. I've heard really, really good things about these units. These are the HDS 10 Pros. These two units link up, which is really nice. I utilize side scan a lot and I still am kind of old school and do some 2D things. So I just feel very confident in this, in Lorenz's abilities to do that. And lastly, the waypoint management was just a little bit easier for me and kind of how I like to do things on Lorenz. So I will let you guys know kind of as I go throughout the season, what I'm thinking of this. I've got some really exciting trips planned in Texas here coming up where I'm going to learn, hopefully learn a little bit from Joss about Lowrance settings for forward facing sonar. I think that'll be my biggest adjustment going from Garmin to Lowrance to kind of get that all dialed in, but but I really don't think that's gonna be any issues. So that's the first major change. Now, one thing I want you guys to take a look at, I did a little short story about this, but this is a brand new graph mount that Jamie Coza here at the Dugout Bait and Tackle designed and it's manufacturing and it is flawless. This is called the dashboard. It, it is highly customizable. You can fit it on any kayak. One of the great things about running it on a Hobie is that it completely clears the pedals. So you're not gonna have an issue of having 
your pedals, if you're using your graphs up front like this, you won't have to worry about them running into your graph mount. It's got enough height clearance to where your cables do not interfere with your front hatch. And one of the really neat things, if you are going on a really long road trip with everything here, you can just simply unscrew all four sides of these, take unscrew your graphs and take this entire thing off. So it's, it's very travel friendly. Another thing what you're gonna see here, you guys, is I have two track mounts that are mounted to either side of this. I'm gonna do some live streaming from my tournaments this year. That's one thing I really wanted to incorporate into my videos. So I've got a Ram tough claw hole over here for my phone. I can run a battery up front, have it fully powered, and do a little bit of live updates from the water during my tournaments, which I'm pretty excited about. And I've got just a little GoPro one on the side here that I might mess with throughout the, throughout the season as well. But highly customizable. They work really well on every brand of kayak, and the dugout's got them. The link will be in the bio for that. All right, you guys, back here, we have an upgraded pulley system. So this is something that Jamie improves on every single year. This year, you can see we've got this cable is one of the toughest cables on the market. I'm the one that's the hardest on my gear than anybody out there in existence. <laughs> Jamie has challenged me to see it how long it's gonna take me to go through this. He thinks that I'm not gonna be able to destroy this one. This cleat makes it extremely easy to lift up your heavy Torquedo 1103 or whatever larger motor you run and clamp it down. Jamie has this mount angled a little bit so it makes it even easier to clip and unclip. Our pulley system is gonna run all the way back with several different attachments making it extra smooth. I am running a Yak Attack Black Pack again. I really really enjoy running this crate because of the lid it comes with and because you can put a lot of different things on it i'm going to put several rod holders on mine this year if we open this thing up all of my power connects back here behind my seat into a 60 amp dakota lithium battery jamie has made this a very clean job along the sides i can simply unclip my battery lift it out to take it out and charge it i've got plenty of space in this extra large black pack here as well for our motor this year, you guys, sticking with my tried and true Torquedo 1103. I've ran Torquedo for about five years now. Absolutely love this motor. Couple things though, with any motor purchase, you wanna make sure you add this piece right down here. This is the rock guard from Innovative Sportsman. I've actually broke a rock guard before, so that can tell you what that would do to your prop or your motor body if you didn't have that invest in your equipment and that is one of the most important things that i've done i also really like these metal triangle these metal steering triangles that you can make to put on your torpedo instead of the plastic ones i just want my stuff to be as indestructible as humanly possible so those are things that i always will do on my motor i will always have a rock guard on there and i'll always have a metal steering triangle this year i've decided to add a power pool again i think i'm going to try to to run a power pool in a couple of tournaments i've had some had some issues with them before but i think you know i've found enough scenarios where i've been wishing i want one so i am going to run one this year in a couple tournaments and i'll keep you posted on whether or not that suits me or it doesn't but for this year i had jamie throw a power pull mount on and we're going to play with that a little bit to see if this is something that i would actually utilize so up front here we've got our point one that's a very important gps puck that you should come with all your lowrance units for pinpoint accuracy. You guys, this is huge when you've got brush piles and you wanna know exactly where you're sitting in relation to your target. So one of my other favorite little affordable mini accessories, if you're running a motor on your kayak, which a lot of people are now, you have to have red and green lights. And the majority of states that I fish in, these flush right to the kayak. They're super bright. They're extremely affordable, very easy. Dugout sells them. I will link these also. Jamie runs the power to that just up here in the front hatch. Just a small little 10, 10 amp battery will take care of that for several days. And for our active target, I've got the Fisher mount that they sell here at Dugout Bait and Tackle. This is still the forward facing sonar mount that I've been using for three years now. I really like it. It's super easy to move around, really easy to store, and it's really secure here on the H-Rail. Jamie sells all the parts here you need to customize this for any type of mounting option you want. Okay, you guys, so that is a good overview of all the subtle changes, some of the very big changes that I made to my 2024 tournament ready kayak that dugout bait and tackle rig down here in Marietta, Georgia. You guys have trusted them to do a lot of your kayak jobs. I've had people from Wisconsin, California, Massachusetts come down and have these guys rig their kayaks. It's been so cool to hear how happy everyone's been with the job that they've done. They are small family business. They're like family to me and they take really good care of their customers. So be sure you guys give them a call. Let them know you saw my video. 
They can take care of anything you need. They also have a fully stocked tackle shop. They sell rods, reels, a bunch of high-end tackle, every kayak accessory, you name it. They've probably got it, you guys. Give them a call. Again, all the links are gonna be in the bio. Stay tuned for the next upcoming Hobie video where I'm gonna talk about the changes to the XR and just some of the things that I've been getting about Hobie that I'd like to just kind of address and talk about, answer some of the questions that I get from time to time. So this is a pretty clean rig, you guys. I'm really excited to give the Lowrance units a shot. They were my favorite units for a long, long time. And I wanna go and kind of see what I think of running these now on the kayak. Again, I know I've teased on this a little bit, but I do have some huge news coming for you guys that I'm really excited about. A lot of you have been asking about this for a long time. That video is gonna drop soon as well, so please be patient. I hope you guys had an absolutely blessed Christmas and happy new year. Thank you all so much for supporting my channel, supporting my competitive fishing journey. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'm gonna do my very best to get back to everybody. Again, you guys, I appreciate y'all so, so much. God bless, and we are gonna catch you next time.